Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. And today we are here with Sean Wells. This is an amazing podcast and we talk about all things supplements, practical tools, health, dopamine, testosterone, psychedelics, everything, and how to use all of these different things in order to better your life, to make it as optimized and as energetic as possible. Sean Wells is the author of the book, The Energy Formula, which is like a fantastic book, which literally goes through and explains everything that you can do in order to optimize your body to live in the best you know, energy that you can possibly. And it's just quite, quite fantastic. I mean, Sean's so reputable. He's just, he's everywhere at the moment. He has his own lab. He helps, helps people do and just achieve like a great thing. So I was very appreciative and blessed to have Sean on the show. And if you guys wouldn't mind, if you have any value out of this, which I'm sure you absolutely will, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Those Apple reviews is what's helping the podcast really start to grow. So if you wouldn't mind, you can just go on to like Corey Bell Apple Podcasts, scroll down to the bottom, uh, leave and leave a review there for us. That would be absolutely fantastic. It's helping us increase the charts, which is which is some real good news. If you guys don't already know. Um, I have a really cool free quiz on my website that I've just built out. And if you're interested in, you know, finding out the number one thing that's holding you back and how you can optimize your life, please go to coreyboutwell.com and chuck in or give that quiz a go. Also, if you're interested in working with me or you want to find out any of the stuff that I've got, or you want to set up a free strategy call where I literally go through for free and plan a bunch of things for you, just Message me on Instagram. You can message me a uh, coach if you like, or just send me a, a direct message. I also have, if you're interested in learning how I uh, achieved a pro status in fitness competitions and did it naturally, I have a program and a course out for, for, for gym training and getting some really awesome feedback. It's for those people who sort of, you know, intermediate in the level gym and they're, they're ready to take things to the next level. It's a course where I go through and you know teach all the little techniques, tips, tricks, the the mindset and all the education and awareness around training and how to actually do so in a step by step by step progress with all the different templates and things that you can use. And I've got hundreds of videos on there, like literally hundreds of videos, and I've got hundreds of workouts on there. Um, so it's up to you. And if you are interested in those things, please just send me a DM saying program or send me a message and we can talk about that too. Also, I have a recipe ebook. I'm like, where did I get that recipe ebook from? And essentially I researched what are all the best ingredients that I could ever find out ever. Like I had to research all the best ingredients. So then I was like, okay, I need to start using these ingredients. What am I going to do? So I started making up all these recipes and my, my intention for those was let's make them as tasty as possible, but let's make them as easy as possible. So I put meal prep strategies in there, different bone broth recipes and how to make certain potions and how to make like healthy pancakes and high fat meals and high carb meals and all the different ingredients. Like everything is all in that recipe ebook. And if you just click the links below, you should be able to get yourself a copy of those. I love the recipe ebook and I still eat those um, recipes every single day. Day, which is quite fantastic and also if you guys like bone broth as much as I do and, you, and you're interested in it and you really want to try it I suggest the best bone broth that you get is the goo type of bone broth the powder stuff isn't as good as the goo stuff because it hasn't been you know it's it's, it's, it's been dried and had all these things when the goo has all the crazy minerals the omega-3s and all the real good stuff and best of the bone is the best one that I have found and I love taking their stuff and you can get 12% off if you head to the link you can click the link below in this video, or if you go to my Instagram bio, you can get 12% off there, um, which is awesome. And also, as always, guys, this podcast is brought to you by Eternum Labs, sponsored by Eternum Labs. Yeah, the goods. And essentially, Eternum Labs is an anti-aging, high-performance supplement company, and we have a whole range of products. At the moment, we've just released Apigenin, which is a super anti-aging um, chamomile and parsley extract basically. And it's a super anti-aging and it's really good with sleep. We've got glutathione, which is one of the main antioxidants in your body to help you like remove toxins and, and free radicals. And we've also got quercetin, which also helps with that and a few other things as well. It's quite fantastic. So if you guys are interested or you want to have a look at what we've actually got, head to eternumlabs.com.au and you can use the code Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, to get yourself a discount. So without any further ado, guys, I can't wait for you to listen to this podcast. Please listen to the whole thing. Like, share, subscribe, leave a review. Absolutely thank you to you if you do and yeah guys we'll see you in the next one have some fun g'day sean thank you so much for coming on to the show 
Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk today. Yeah, yeah, which is really cool. Um, before we get started, what's something new that you have learned recently that you think is just awesome to share? Uh, okay, I was literally just three minutes ago reading about <laughs> dopamine reward mechanism is not the only reward mechanism. There was a new discovery of GABAergic neurons that are in the uh, uh, the ventricle of the the brain. Um, it's about thirty percent of the actual reward mechanism. It's not just dopamine. So I was uh, looking at: is there any way to affect these particular GABAergic neurons uh, that you could also? Because I don't know if you know, like we often hear about dopamine being like this negative thing, right? Like with TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and <laughs> yeah. the reward mechanism. And like, we're like hitting the like and the heart button and, you know, whatever. And we need to see the comments and what's my algorithm. And I got to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And there is an element of addiction to dopamine for sure. But dopamine can also enhance productivity. Dopamine can uh lift your mood increase your confidence so that's one of the reasons that it has some addictive nature to it you don't want to get into like this spiral like social media can potentially generate but if you could lift dopamine for a period of time uh it can be ideal so i was just reading about this and seeing if there's any supplements that i could work on that would enhance this so i i already have an energy ingredient coming out that's uh, dopaminergic that enhances the dopamine response as well as energy and inhibits adenosine similar to caffeine, but it goes far beyond caffeine by working on that dopamine mechanism. Oh, would you mind sharing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually can now, like it's, uh, I was just thinking of whether I could or can't, but like, uh, we've already filed 25 patents and, and we've already announced some of the studies. So, uh, it is called parazanthine. It's a downstream metabolite of caffeine. And if you know me, then you know I've already uh, worked on patents and uh, the ingredients t crean and dynamine uh, that are super successful. But this is actually really interesting because caffeine for about two thirds of the population actually doesn't work that well. About a third of the population are slow metabolizers genetically. And that means that they have like more brain fog, side effects, toxicity. Um, I, I actually think part of this is one caffeine itself hanging around too long, which actually has some toxicity and not getting to the parazanthine, but two, uh, another metabolite besides parazanthine that it can convert into that's semi-toxic and, and has a lot of side effects is theophylline. And so, uh, then there's this other third of the population that are fast metabolizers. And these are the people that say, I can just go straight to bed. Yeah. And Damn so that's not people. really, <laughs> yeah, it's not really beneficial for them either. And what we see is that only about a third of the population is like a normal metabolizer for caffeine. So two thirds of us, 67% of us don't really experience caffeine that well most of the time. And what we see with parazanthine is that is the one metabolite of caffeine that really has all of the energy, neurological lift, the cognitive uh, benefit, the nootropic benefit uh, that people are looking for from caffeine without having to go through the metabolism issues and without having the other metabolites that have some side effects like theobromine and theophylline. So uh, what we're seeing is that it's like caffeine evolved, essentially. It's like the oh caffeine without God. the chaos. Oh, and, my uh, God. That is and, and what's really cool is because it's like a, the, the dopamine enhancement aspect that really caffeine doesn't have. Uh, we get people that are like, uh, I just feel like this confidence, this swagger. You know, people will go on stage and like they'll crush it and. <laughs> They're just like, this is amazing. And so that's really cool. And because of that too, it's also neuroprotective. The dopaminergic aspect of it means that it's protecting uh, your brain cells. So like we're looking at UFC, football, 
you know, um, all that kind of stuff where they get high contact sports where there could be traumatic brain injury, et cetera. So um, really cool stuff. Yeah, that is really cool stuff. Oh my goodness. You just been on the podcast for two seconds and just throwing down all this fire. <laughs> How do you say that word again? Para? Uh, Parasanthine. Parasanthine. Yeah, that yeah. is that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> what what would you suggest in general? Because I know like parazanthine and uh, all of these other different supplements, one of the main reasons is to get people energetic and to get people, you know, optimized as possible. What would you suggest for someone who really wants to start upgrading their energy? Who's like, yeah, like I operate at a pretty good level, but I could, I would like to take it up to another level. What are some of the things yeah, that you yeah. can start suggesting them to do? For me, the, the parazanthine is great for like just feeling optimized. It doesn't feel stim stimish. And I've experimented with tons of methylxanthines in this family. Like I said, patented t and dynamine and obviously worked with, you know, DMAA and all these different compounds, but parazanthine feels like very clean. It just feels like you optimize. Mm -hmm. uh, but on top of that, I look at doing uh, mitochondrial enhancement supplements. So uh, looking at things like CoQ10, PQQ involved in like the electron transport chain, um, looking at, um, you were just talking about before NMN, uh, you know, some people like NR, I think NMN is the better choice. So I like that, like, that's what you're carrying. Um, interestingly, interestingly, I actually think the best choice per the data uh, is 500 milligrams of niacin twice a day. And that's what I've been doing lately. It's intense. Let me tell you. <laughs> so for 30 to 60 minutes, you feel like your skin is on fire and tingling. It's called paresthesis. So it's not really for the faint of heart. It does subside with continued use, but it never fully subsides. And yes, you can get no flush niacin. There's nicotinamide and uh, inositol hexanicotinate, and there's these forms of niacin that are that are no flush, but I don't feel like those actually have the same benefit. What's really interesting too is that it in this one study where healthy men were taking this dose, this, it's a very large dose. Like, I mean, even at 100 milligrams, you feel the flush. So 500 is large, and doing it twice a day is not not the best, but. Uh, eight times the uh, level of NAD in the muscle and plasma that they saw uh, with that dosing. So that's what I've been doing lately. And really interestingly is that it also inhibits fat gain. If you like go down the rabbit hole and improves like dyslipidemia, inflammation, improves uh, superficial blood flow um, uh, at the venous level. Um, and, and it's actually something I'm researching potentially for like, if you're someone that does like red light therapy, that I believe like that flush, the tingle that is bringing blood flow to the surface uh, could enhance the effect of the near and far infrared light. So right. I'm, I'm, yeah, niacin really cool if you can take it. And of course, like if you've done, um, you know, one of the best ways to get NAD would be IV NAD, but you know, that can take three and a half hours can get very expensive. One of the things, and even NR NMN, or, you know, some of these other compounds can be very expensive. Niacin is dirt cheap, but again, um, and, and it's raising NAD because it's a precursor, but again, it's just, can you deal with the flush and the burn. <laughs> so that, that's just something that, that you have to, to get over. But I, I do love all of those compounds. Uh, I've been playing with a variety of them, seeing what moves the needle. And then uh, for other mitochondrial enhancement, um, BABA is one that I've worked on and put some patents around. So beta amino isobutyric acid. What's really cool here is this is the signal for intense exercise. So when you're exercising, you start catabolizing uh, this BCAA branch chain amino acid muscle pool, and you start breaking it down because you need fuel. It's one of the things that'll just happen. BCAAs are, are a fuel for your, for your body when you're exercising intensely. 
And one of the BCAAs, valine, can turn into, can convert into beta amino isobutyric acid, BABA. And this compound, when it's elevated, because your body knows that it's breaking down this, this muscle pool of BCAAs, is that it's a signal. Your body's like, whoa, we're, we're intensely exercising. So what's cool is the supplement BABA that I've worked on, it's a fermented amino acid essentially, um, that will uh, raise your, your body's signal level of intense exercise. So it's essentially, it's an exercise mimetic, it's exercise in a bottle. We've had uh, compounds in the past like ACAR, uh, GW501516, I think is, Anyway, uh, carterine, I think, is the GW one. Anyway, there's been some compounds in the past that are exercise mimetics, but this one is natural and is your body's actual uh, signal for intense exercise. So what we see is when you elevate this level, it's like getting more reps or more steps out of all your exercise. It's like when you do eight reps that you're doing 12 to your body. And so... It's pretty incredible because BABA is associated with uh, improved neuroplasticity, improved bone mineral density, improved muscle mass and strength, uh, innervation, like reduced fat mass, improved uh, glycogen storage and fatty acid utilization. And, you know, you can just go down the line, brown adipose tissue uh, activation, et cetera. Basically, anything associated with intense exercise is associated with BABA. So enhancing BABA levels uh, is ideal. So augmenting is something that I would recommend doing with that supplement. That is literally insane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and actually getting to brown adipose tissue, speaking of mitochondria, if your listeners know what that is, maybe they do or don't, but it's an area of research that's been uh, hotly discussed. And there's only about seven ounces of brown adipose tissue on your body. About 99% of your fat on your body is white adipose tissue. And what we found, and by the way, it's brown because it's mitochondrial dense. It's because the mitochondria have iron and all that kind of stuff. So these uh, high energy, high impact fat cells are very unique. What they do is create heat. So when you're a baby, before you have the ability to shiver at six or seven months, how you uh, have thermogenesis, how you create heat to, to keep the baby warm and safe, you know, to keep body temperature normal, is that it will activate these brown adipose tissue cells and those will create heat. And we have now discovered that many people that seem to have like that ability to eat whatever they want and stay lean that maybe it's because they have one more brown adipose tissue cells and two, they're more activated or active. And so now it's become a little bit of a holy grail in medicine, one, how to uh, increase brown adipose tissue cells or make them more active or two, and this is an interesting one, how to beige white adipose tissue cells, how to like turn them more to to that direction of being metabolically active Jackson and there's a lot of research yeah there's a lot of research heading that way so there's an interesting compound uh grains of paradise uh is a is an herb that's uh similar to ginger and it has some compounds in it um paradoxal um paradoxine uh there's several compounds that are that are present in it and what we found is that it enhances brown adipose tissue uh, um, activation and function. So we're seeing that um, just with 40 milligrams once a day, there is over a hundred calories additionally burned. So we don't even know if like, if it's 80 milligrams, if it's twice a day, like what does it do? And it's non-stimulatory. It is thermogenic. It is like a, in a, like a spicy herb. But we see this same uh, effect with some of the other spices like um, cayenne, like ginger. Uh, some of these compounds have very thermogenic effects on the body. 
and interpolating and extrapolating, like maybe they're affecting uh, brown adipose tissue as well. We know grains of paradise does, but I think there's actually probably several that might. Um, but these spicy herbs are known to increase your body heat, right? And increase your metabolism. So, you know, cultures that eat more spicy uh, tend to be leaner uh, for this reason. They're burning more calories. <laughs> Another insane fact. Make sure you get your spices in, people. I'd love to know, like, just from hearing you talk about all this stuff, what you sort of prioritize going through taking all of the natural subs. And then what you sort of go through, like taking all of the, the extra stuff, like what do you sort of do naturally versus what do you do like taking any of the, you know, uh, made things? You know, I go a little bit by intuition. I don't like the idea of, um, you know, there's an aspect of exogenous versus endogenous. So what this means is endogenous means it's made naturally in your body exogenous means it's coming from an outside source, like you're consuming it or injecting it or, you know, whatever. So think of like testosterone that, you know, men, when they have lower testosterone levels, get TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, they inject the testosterone or they get the pellets or whatever it is, or the cream. And what happens is your body will stop producing the testosterone because it senses there's plenty around and so it doesn't need to make it anymore. So one thing that I, and, and, and this happens, like if you look at medications, one of the ways that like most medications work is they block an enzyme. And in the short term, this works, but in the long term, your body usually finds a way like, you know, over through around that dam that you put in the pathway, essentially, like think of like the dam in the river you know, eventually the body's going to find a way around, over, through, whatever. And this is where like all the side effects and things come in, like in medications over time. That's why this idea works for a week, two weeks, three weeks, but like over time, it becomes a very side effect ridden and is not ideal to eternally try and block a pathway that's natural to the body. Like you should change your habits. You should change like the way you're living your life over just, you know, infinitely blocking a pathway. And so the, the thought there for me is that I don't like to just take something every single day, all the time indefinitely. Mm -hmm. What I do is like, I rotate through supplements. Sometimes I take what's called orthomolecular doses, very high doses, you know, like, Yes, 60 milligrams of vitamin C prevents scurvy, but multiple grams of vitamin C can do a lot of other things, right? Like that, that's the idea of orthomolecular. That's where we're studying, you know, what are the benefits of high dosing versus just preventing deficiencies? So all this to say is like, I go by some level of intuition to say like, you know, right now with this level of stress, this level of training, this level of of uh, travel, this level of exposure to viruses and whatever, here's what I'm going to take today. And that varies from day to day. Like I, I really mix it up and I feel like that's ideal. Like even when I want to take an adaptogen on a regular basis, like one day I'll be taking rhodiola, the next day I'll take ashwagandha, another day it could be ginseng. I just like to, to mix it up and keep it fresh to my body. Yeah, I really like that. What's what's been your experience like, you know, before and after, like in certain sort of like your supplement journey? Like what was life like before or even just like optimizing yourself? What was life like before optimizing yourself and now doing all these other things? Because I know it's not just supplements, you do like a whole range of things. So what do you what do you think um what do you think that journey's been like or been the best for you? You know, I was always trying to fix myself because I thought I was broken. I had, I fought like a lot of depression. I fought obesity, anorexia. Like I went from 300 pounds to 150 pounds. And at one point I was, uh, 220 pounds jacked and ripped and, you know, but I was orthorexic where I was eating, you know, eight times a day, working out for four hours a day, all that stuff, you know, and it's just, I did a lot of biohacking along the way. And I've discovered all these hacks and tricks and supplements and pathways. And 
a lot of it was revolving around how to fix my broken self is how I perceived it. But it wasn't until I really did the deep work um, a little over a year and a half ago in plant medicine that that all shifted where I've been working like 80 hours a week for most of my life and like grinding and hustling and pushing and it's never good enough. And, you know, wanting like external validation when I get that when I get that love from other people, then I'll love myself. Then I'll, then I'll be okay with myself. But until then I'm an imposter until then I'm not enough. And it wasn't until I started doing my work in plant medicine and consciousness and meditation and breathing and some of the softer sides of biohacking, if you will, that now are kind of included um, that I really feel like I built that solid foundation on which to biohack. I see a lot of biohackers that hate themselves, that are grinding, that are driven entrepreneurs, that are insecure, that are projecting out in, you know, that insecurity and hurting other people. And, but they're doing the peptides and the exosomes and the supplements and the red light and the, you know, and it becomes an addiction to do all the devices and things. And like, how do I, how do I fix myself? How do I push myself so I can grind harder and further and more? But it wasn't until I had that, that energy shift to where I felt like I could love myself and therefore love others that I had the freedom to do whatever lights me up and chase that instead of just stay heads down in the path I'm on. Um, that, that a lot of this changed. And then these biohacks felt like a way to optimize what's, what's great instead of like trying to put band-aids on you know a bleeding body yeah oh man thank you i think that's like like it's really beautiful to be honest and i think that um a lot of people could take a lot of wisdom out of that i'd love to explore a little bit of that um journey that you had into your own consciousness and some of the deep work how was that like what were some of the experiences in there i'd love to hear about them and how they've sort of lifted you up so that you can start you know really start doing the things you love yeah, my, my first journey was on um, psilocybin uh, mushrooms. And, um, but it was with a, a great group of facilitators that had, um, you know, taken down like my, we, we did a, an intense call around my traumas and, you know, past um, issues and, and things I wanted to work through and things that could be triggers. And, so I felt safe, you know, it's about set and setting like your mindset going in and the environment that you're in and feeling safe so that your body can lean in. When you're in a setting with these um, psychedelics and your body is not safe, you either need to be way overpowered or you could actually be hardwiring in new trauma. And so you need to be very careful with these substances. Um, I don't really even support using them that much recreationally. Um, I like the idea of being around a sitter, a facilitator, being in a safe setting, setting intentions, um, you know, those kinds of things. Cause you don't know like how things are going to go. One, chemically something could go wrong, you know, either from what you were given or, you know, maybe you had some other medication or who knows, but two, um, you know, you could have something come up in terms of like a trauma that's been highly suppressed, maybe something you don't even remember, period. You may have been molested as a four year old. It's super suppressed. You don't even know it's there. It may come out. And so you want to be around people that you can trust. And if these things come up that, you know, you can deal with them, move through them and release them. That's the beauty of doing these plant medicines. That's why it is called the work. A lot of times it is play, it's creative, it's enjoyable, but things can come up. But I'll tell you like when these things come up to move through them and release them and to like live in your truth and your authentic truth is so powerful. Um, because typically the ego, like a lot of these, these substances work on um, ego dissolution, because the ego, it, it protects you, it keeps you safe, you know, saying, Oh, don't, you know, don't go up on stage, or, you know, don't go talk to that girl, or, 
you know, whatever, like you could get hurt. Don't, you know, don't go into a partnership with this guy. Like he's going to screw you over whatever it is. But that protection is also prevention, right? Like the ego protects, but it also prevents, like it prevents you from, you know, having that business partnership, that great relationship, that, you know, uh, chance to be on stage and be a speaker or whatever it is. So I think when you can get to, dissolve these constructs these stories the suppression of truth that your ego will you know so deftly adjust that you can see your authentic self and be face to face with the truth and it's so clear and you will hear and see this lights me up this does not it's either a hell yes or a hell no. And it's just that simple, that clear. There's no more noise, no more stories, no more adjusting, no more. But, you know, there's this other. No, nope. it's just super clear. And you're left with that. And then what are you going to do about it? And that's what that's where the integration comes in. It's like, OK, now we know the truth. The truth is super clear. But are you going to, you know, marry this girl are you going to get divorced are you going to like you know come out and be gay are you like going to you know keep hiding like are you whatever it is whatever like are you going to like you know admit that you were abused or you know, whatever this thing is that you've been holding in you can let go and live your truth and that there's so much freedom in that there's so much purity in that and i let go of the idea of like insinuated in the word biohacking it's a little triggering for me because like i used to dream of when i was overweight like taking a knife and cutting the fat off my body like hacking at myself and this idea of hacking is like this shortcut because i'm broken i need to fix myself asap and i don't feel like we're broken i feel like we actually need to polish ourselves up and get back to the inner child get back to our inner truth but we're we're perfect as we are and we just need you know some polish every now and then and that can happen with breath work and gratitude and journaling and plant medicine and these things that get us back to our inner truth and get us listening to our own mind instead of suppressing it with facebook instagram tiktok tv you know, whatever it is, all these distractions that we're always doing. So that's one of the biggest things that came out of my first journey was this. I, I usually entered a room and would give my my resume in a sense to show people I'm good enough to be in this room. And with these people, I didn't know any of them. And I was just I found myself like going into the medicine and like laying in a cuddle puddle uh, these other people, like literally like, you know, you, you know, some people like, this is how I feel. Some people go off into the, you know, uh, watch the trees and, and, you know, look at nature. Some people go off into a room by themselves and think deeply. Some people go listen to music on their headphones. Some people like me just like want to be around people and just feel all like lovey. And, mm -hmm. And by the way, when you're in this state, like it's not sexual at all. It's more like a, an inner child kind of thing. Like you feel like very childlike. So it's literally like you feel like a five-year-old kind of thing. Um, and so uh, it, that can be super beautiful to, you know, just be present with people to feel love, love and not have to earn it, not have to show it, not have to externally validate it, not have to prove yourself. And for me, that was a game changer. Yeah, man. Thank you for sharing all of that. There was so much wisdom in there. And I was kind of like, now I was like, I'm not sure which direction <laughs> that I wanted to go with because there's, there's so much good stuff in there. And yeah, I remember like reading a study. It's like, if you do three points of um, gratitude every single day it's like you're 20 percent happier which is mm. just going to significantly reduce your stress which i think is one of the main things that like you know i think we're very blessed at the moment with just this um i find that it's just sort of like a, a lot of people that i talk to have had recently maybe i'd say over the past you know eight months 
I think that the whole plant medicine world is just becoming more known and it's really it's really great that people are having um, real good experiences. I'm not saying that everyone does have good experiences, but it's good that people are having good experiences. And I realize that I think there's sort of like, because 2020, 2021, there's just so much stress going on all the time, that it's really good to have these things. It brings your stress down and it allows you to think, you know, bigger, clearer, be more focused and then do things that are better for you. A hundred percent. Totally agree. Like I feel, you know, I, I, I definitely get that it, it's the, you know, last year and a half has been the pandemic and people have been hurt and lost their lives and, and all those kinds of things. But during this time, I feel blessed that I got to pursue myself and I got to go deep within myself and, and, the world stopped. And I feel like at that point I was supposed to be traveling over 300 days. I was going to be at all these events and I couldn't have stopped it in a way that, that would have been like that. And the way everything stopped, it allowed me to like take stock of what I was doing in my life. Is it actually lighting me up? You know, let me take a look at all these things and then start doing this plant medicine work and and feeling like I was getting to know myself, love myself, like it shifted everything. And then be around people that were consciousness driven versus just success driven. And uh, that was a, that was a huge shift too. the people I had around me in these journeys, in these circles uh, really shifted my awareness and consciousness. Yeah. Crazy. So how do you like deal with stress, especially now? Like, what do you, What are some of the biggest like takeaways that you think that, you know, people who are listening could um, do, use or understand or be aware of in terms of, you know, stress, stress management and and figuring it out? Well, the the whole book, really, the the energy formula um, book is, is really revolves around resilience and resilience means your ability to take on stress like we love people like, I don't know, Tom Brady or Michael Jordan, or, you know, whoever these people are that seem cool and calm under pressure. And it's because they have a large, what's called allostatic load. It's a stress bucket and it's your capacity for stress. And some people have smaller buckets and larger buckets. And so we're either easier to kill or harder to kill based on the size of that bucket. There's also a bell curve that has the ideal amounts of stress. So on the left side of the bell curve, if you can imagine that is U stress, EU stress, a positive stress, a hormetic stress that helps us grow stronger, grow more resilient. Then in the middle, there's a sweet spot of kind of the right amount of stress and the ultimate amount of adaptation. That's called the, um, the, oh gosh, the, the, it's the, the, uh, I'm blanking on the zone. It's something, something. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the something zone and I'm blanking on it right now. It's the sweet spot essentially. Yeah. And, um, and then on the, on the right side is distress. So that's a, a negative amount of stress that's actually hurting the body that's causing uh, harm to it. Now, if you think of like HRV, heart rate variability, I mean, that's essentially the same idea. It's like a metric that can show you're ready to train or not. And so when you're not ready to train after you're overtrained, that would be like that you did some degree of distress and you need to let your body heal, rest up so that you're ready to train again. Now, the things that could help with that, certainly supplements, things like adaptogens, like I mentioned before, ashwagandha, rhodiola, ginseng, maca, Uh, These kinds of compounds help the body be more resilient. And that's why we see them enhance nootropic function, enhance blood sugar, blood pressure, sleep, strength. And people are like, wow, these things enhance everything. They really do because they're optimizing your body and its capacity for stress. Um, Beyond that, there are certainly, you know, going back to psilocybin, um, what's really interesting is microdosing psilocybin there's definitely effects on anxiety and stress management. It seems to enhance your capacity for stress and reduce anxiety. And microdosing means subperceptual levels. So this means it's not having any type of psychedelic effect. This is literally like 
let's say a journey dose is two and a half grams, we're talking about a hundred milligrams. So one twenty-fifth the dose, and you're only doing it twice a week for maybe eight weeks. And there's been a lot of benefit to microdosing and, and a lot of research is going into that, that you don't need to necessarily do these journey doses where you have these pivotal breakthroughs. I mean, those are great, but you can get a lot of the um, anxiolytic benefit, the reduced stress from doing the microdosing. And then beyond that, some people get uh, benefit from the cannabinoids, uh, CBD, THC, uh, Delta-8 is like a variant of THC that's legal in some places where THC is not. But what's interesting is the endocannabinoid system is called the master regulatory system, the master regulator system, where it basically controls like mood, pain, inflammation, uh, it's controlling so much. And like, we see like that, you know, there's doctors that specialize in the circulatory system and, you know, the cardiovascular system and in the musculoskeletal system or whatever it is. But I don't see doctors specializing in this master regula regulator system of the endocannabinoid system, which is crazy. So there's a lot of research going into that now, but there's a lot that's not known about it. And we do know that CBD and THC do have some benefits. And now we're seeing people explore CBG and CBA and uh, CBN and some of these other cannabinoids uh, that all seem to have different impacts for different people on stress and on feelings of uh, wellness and, and mood enhancement. Yeah, and there's just so so much there, and there's just so much to keep on top of as well because there's so much coming out, and there's sort of like all these different extracts and crazy things. And thanks for that explanation there. What do you think? The, I'm just I'm super curious for this. What do you think the link is between like health, fitness, supplements, taking care of yourself, and entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial type of people? health fitness and eating right with entrepreneurs like why they don't do that is that what you're saying or why they like what's the link sort of like why they should be focusing a lot of energy on on, on those things and like why does because i find that a lot of entrepreneurs do or they want to or they or they don't know how and or they're, they're trying to get clear clear on some stuff and they sort of like, like dive in a little bit um, sometimes some are resistant. Um, they're like, oh, I don't need to take care of this. I'm just, you know, 80 hour weeks. <laughs> I was like, what do you think like the link is between, between those things, including supplements and, and like energy enhancements and mitochondrial enhancements and stuff like that as well? Yeah. I feel like, you know, one it's, you feel like it's, I don't have time for a lot of that stuff. You know, a lot of these people certainly say that when you're working so many hours, but there's the idea that's become clear to me that like we are often giving from our cup and go back to maybe even thinking of the bucket, the allostatic load bucket, we're giving from the bucket, right? And we're getting drained from that. But what would be more ideal is that we're giving from the overflow of our cup because we have plenty of self-care and that we can show up fully when people are like, Oh, you know, like you got to show up. It's obligation. It's, it's uh, you know, it's need it's, you know, it's, I need to be there because I'm expected to be there. And that's what a good person does is sacrifice. And if you think about that idea of like grinding and sacrifice and, you know, you're showing up halfway, you're showing up heads down. And yes, you're showing up, but I would rather show up less, but show up in my full greatness, show up 100%, show up passionate, uh, lit up and wanting to be there. That's how people deserve me. And that's what I deserve to do for myself. You know, I don't want them to get a halfway version of me. And so a big part of self-care is certainly exercise and moving our body. And interestingly, um, I have a hidden chapter on uh, with the energy formula at the energy form. It's energyformula.com. Um, and that's free is this hidden chapter on natural movement. But there's really interesting data on moving your body throughout the day 
is more effective than going to the gym for an hour and being sedentary the rest of the day. It's called exercise snacks. So if you can, um, let's say like, you know, you're working at a computer most of the day and typically, hopefully you're taking like bio breaks where you go to the bathroom, you get some water, you move your body around a little bit, maybe you do some breath work, you'd certainly rest your eyes uh, from looking at screens. If you can work in some planks, some sit-ups, some push-ups, some air squats, some yoga, something for five minutes every hour, it has a, a much greater impact on longevity, like literally like 40% greater longevity versus even working out for that one hour a day because you're actually, it takes over 45 minutes to undo the sitting syndrome, the, the sedentary nature uh, that your body's been having. Your, your muscles are actually like shortening and lengthening in certain positions to keep you energetically in a sitting position. Your lymph is not moving as much. Your blood isn't moving as much. Your, uh, you know, you're, you're changing the shape of your musculoskeletal system, you're changing uh, the way like a lot of these systems are acting to keep you in a sitting sedentary position. Mm -hmm. And so undoing that is pretty key because we're meant to move naturally. We're meant to move primally. We're meant to crawl. We're meant to climb. And we're getting away from a lot of these things. We're meant to walk with bare feet as well. So I think it's important to not only exercise, but move and and exercise snack throughout yeah. the day yeah i love that i use also as well i use um i really like vivo barefoots i got them about a year mm -hmm. ago yes. and man i just every time that the soles start wearing out because it's the only shoes i wear i'm like all right time to get a new pair <laughs> and um i try to set like personally i try to set myself a little step goal just as a little hack and then like follow that on a on an app on my um on my phone so then I can track it and see how many steps that I've done to know that I've moved as much as possible throughout the day. But it, you always feel so much better when you do and surely like surely moving and, and, and exercising and doing these things that are good for you would be beneficial for like your testosterone and decision making as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? Do you know anything about like um, how do you like get your testosterone really well and, and improve your um, decision making? Well, how to elevate testosterone, uh, if you are low testosterone, I mean, certainly there's some medications that I would look into before I would go all the way to testosterone replacement. There's things like HCG, human chorionic uh, gonadotropin, as well as something like uh, eczemistane or Rimidex that are Clomid that are going to um, uh, inhibit the conversion of uh, aromatase um, uh, it's going to inhibit the, the aromatase enzyme converting um, testosterone to estrogen. So you're going to naturally lower estrogen levels, enhance your testosterone levels. Um, also looking at things that enhance free testosterone, a lot of testosterone can be available, but bound um, by something called SHBG. So if you increase free testosterone, um, it's, it's not necessarily just about total testosterone levels. It's, it's actually free testosterone that matters the most that you, that the experiential testosterone. So there's actually, um, some herbs that do that. One is stinging nettle. Um, so that's one to look at that increases free testosterone. Um, and then I would also look at something called deaspartic acid um on occasion and that will increase um the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone lh and fsh that can lead to um being more reproductively active and then you know lastly like i you know going back to the adaptogens and just reducing stress doing doing hormetic stresses like cold plunges and fasting and red light saunas and taking adaptogens, uh, all of these things are going to enhance your testosterone levels as your allostatic load increases. 
Um, another thing on top of that is testosterone is uh, cholesterol based. And so when you increase your fat intake, um, you tend to increase your steroid hormone levels naturally. So being on like a ketogenic diet, a high fat diet is going to naturally increase uh, these steroid hormones, including testosterone. Yeah, insane. I know you're a real big uh, proponent of the keto diet. What are you, mm. what are you most passionate about at the moment? Probably the plant medicine thing. One of the things yep. I'm working on is uh, actually supplement stacks around the plant medicine. So mm -hmm. I want to um, reduce the stress coming in by doing things like adaptogens and slowing the body down. Uh, wow, that's my dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, nah, you're all right. Dogs welcome on the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so slowing the body down, going into it, having, making sure that you have, um, you know, ample electrolytes and hydration. Certainly that's been discussed, uh, during the journey. I don't like taking a lot of supplements around the actual journey itself, but there's a lot that I'm looking at, especially post journey, um, that can detoxify you. There's, um, a compound called dihydromyrcetin that's been studied with hangovers to reduce that toxification that happens. Um, so that's really great if you're someone that had a heavy night drinking or you feel kind of hungover after something like MDMA or some of these compounds. And there's another compound that I've been researching called 7,8-dihydroxyflavone. Um, and what's really interesting is one of the real benefits of psychedelics is that they uh, make the brain more neuroplastic. And so that means that the brain can essentially rewire itself. Michael Pollan talks about um, that you kind of keep skiing down the same tracks over and over and over and over. Uh, but plant medicine is like throwing fresh powder over those tracks. And now you can ski down a new path. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to, to rewire the brain. Mm -hmm. And the neuroplasticity is so key for allowing your body to make new habits, new changes as you're stepping into this new truth is it's very simple for you to go like have like epiphanies and have like all these thoughts, but then go back to your regular life and then go back into your old habits. Yeah. And then you're still so the more yourself. that you, yeah, the more you do this integration work and the more you stay in this neuroplastic state, the more you can kind of hardwire new habits. So what I like is the idea of using this compound that enhances neuroplasticity, you know, for the days and weeks to come after the journey. And of course, working with your facilitator. Another idea that I had, uh, and I think this makes a lot of sense is that if you take the specific mushroom, if you're doing mushrooms, and you make micro doses of that mushroom and have that in the days and weeks after your journey, the one that you had during your journey, not just some random mushroom, not just some random strain, not just some random product from someone else, but the actual mushroom that you took during your journey and have that for micro doses that it will tell your body, it will like signal back to that experience and put you in that neuroplastic state longer. Whoa. It's kind of like if, if you're in a journey state and you hear Whoa. and you hear like a, a really beautiful song during like one of your epiphanies, if you hear that song outside of your journey, it'll bring you back. And yes, you know, a great song can, you know, help put you in a certain state, but that specific song is going to be way more powerful. So that's what my thought is around this specific strain of that specific mushroom that you did your journey on to do the microdoses with could be very powerful yeah that's crazy because i have i only used one type of mushroom which is like a local mushroom um in mm -hmm. australia and i had a journey i think it was two months ago i think now it's about two two and a half months ago and yeah i definitely microdosed for a little while after that and i was like these is the absolute best but i haven't done any research in terms of like um in terms of actual like a microdosing protocol what would be best how do you take things around it i'd love to just talk yeah. a little bit about um uh, microdosing 
sure yeah a little bit selfish like, in terms of like you know what what should i actually do and, and, and how should i do it so paul stamets protocol is using niacin like we were talking about before only 100 milligrams which will give you a little bit of a flush uh along with that microdose of, of mushroom and along with lion's mane he's saying lion's mane because of it's adaptogenic and it does enhance BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is associated with neuroplasticity. But what's amazing about the 7,8-dihydroxyflavone is it increases neuroplasticity and BDNF greater than BDNF injected itself. Whoa. So this is just mind-blowing about like how well this compound works. So that's what I've been researching is, is using this compound to enhance the neuroplasticity and then using the microdose strain of your journey together to really enhance that effect. And then detoxification using that dihydromyrocetin and then increasing your serotonin levels because sometimes those can be dumped, especially if you use MDMA or something like that. Um, so I use Zembrin which is uh, an extract of kana. And kana is a natural uh, SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So it's going to help serotonin hang around longer. And I love this post journey to bounce back with your serotonin levels, especially when you combine it with tryptophan or 5-hydroxy tryptophan. Uh, that's a really good combination. And then also some other things that modulate serotonin would be vitamin D, uh, saffron extract, um, um, those are, those are some of the ones that come to mind that, that are really excellent to throw in there as well. Um, and then I like, uh, alpha GPC, uh, anything that's involves like a lot of focus or thinking, uh, like this is true of nootropic stacks as well too. Like if you're, you know, looking to enhance your productivity, uh, you're depleting acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter. Uh, so taking um, something that donates acetyl groups like acetyl L-carnitine, taking uh, something that will enhance choline levels in the brain like alpha GPC, those are going to be really helpful to build back up acetylcholine levels so that you can bounce back faster from your journeys. That is insane. I love how all of these different things in terms of like to, in, in order you know, or in terms of getting more productive, being more creative, and like work extremely well within the psychedelic medicine space as well. I think that's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then you can obviously use all of them in order to, you know, be in the best mind and best brain as possible for, for you know, whether it's self-reflection or building a business or, or just improving uh, the quality of your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Thanks so much for sharing all these things, Sean. If there is anything else that you think could be um, extremely interesting for, for my listeners, obviously people who are listening are people who really want to better themselves. If you have any suggestion for them for any of the stuff that they can um, start doing or learning, please let us know. Obviously, the logical answer is to get your book, The Energy Formula. I know that come out in, in April and that's like yeah. on Amazon and stuff. Anyone can can grab that. But what, do you, what are some practical tools and stuff that you would suggest to people who really want to start better be productive, be more creative and, and just start to really crush life. Well, like you said, the energy formula, definitely energy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, it's a 400 page book. And I go through like literally everything that you can think of all the supplements, all the biohacks, all the devices, apps. Yeah. Um, and also like on energyformula.com, you get like a fasting for energy guide. You get uh, this hidden chapter on natural movement, you get recipes, Q and A's, all this stuff free. Um, and I have an audible version that is my voice, uh, a hardcover that's 400 pages, full color, every single page, uh, with 60 nice. diagrams. And then there's, an e <laughs> um, but beyond that, um, and also some of my other stuff, like, to be honest, like seanwells.com, I have like literally all these 10 page scientific guides that I put up every week. I have a free newsletter every week, nothing that costs any money. Um, and at Sean Wells on Instagram, I have all these infographics and cool things like supplement stacks and, and all of this stuff. So all of that's free. Um, but I'm trying to think like, 
you know, one of the things that another ingredient that I'm putting out that's really cool is called dilucine. So um, it, kind of a, a holy grail of like muscle gain and strength gain is muscle protein synthesis. And that means anabolism. So your body's in a, in a state of all the time of protein synthesis and protein breakdown. And specifically with the muscle, it's muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. And then there's kind of the, the net effect of those two is net muscle accretion, meaning like muscle gained. Like if you're in a positive state of muscle protein synthesis. And so leucine, going back to the BCAAs, leucine is the key amino acid that drives muscle protein synthesis. That's the difference maker in all these protein sources. It's not really the total amino acids or the amino acid makeup or blah, 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 you know, essential amino acids. Those are all great and important to some degree, but the most key factor is how much leucine the protein has that will drive muscle protein synthesis. That's why collagen, a great protein for enhancing you know, all these connective tissues in your body, your hair, skin, nails, gut, bone, et cetera. But it doesn't enhance muscle because it has zero leucine basically. And another factor here is that what we found is free amino acids um, take longer to get to the plasma than di or tripeptides, meaning two or three amino acids bound together because there's these unique transporters in the gut lining that take up these two or three amino acid compounds. And so what uh, me and my team thought to do was compare dilucine to free leucine. Whoa. And interestingly, we found that dilucine is about 60% better at driving muscle protein synthesis. Up until now, throughout the entirety of history, Leucine was the gold standard. Now dilucine is 60% better because it gets to plasma faster. And with leucine levels, it's not about how much gets to your plasma. It's about how fast it gets there. And then it like flips the switch for muscle protein synthesis. So with this, you can take lower doses and get greater effect because it's hitting the plasma faster and turning on muscle protein synthesis. And what's really interesting is that we've seen is that leucine needs exercise to be involved to really trigger the muscle protein synthesis. And with our dilucine, it's so fast that it doesn't even need that, that it can just trigger muscle protein synthesis without the exercise. So where's the button that I can buy the thing to get the stuff <laughs> dilucine? Where is it? Uh, we, click, we click it right now. Boom. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're working on it. We don't have the partner yet, but it, it is coming soon. Uh, I can already talk about it because we have patents filed and all that kind of stuff. So awesome. Uh, but we're, we're working on a, on a partner now, but uh, definitely be looking for it. It'll be coming soon. Perizanthine, the one I talked about at the beginning, should be out by the, the beginning of um, 2022 for sure. Oh man, that's so cool. Well, thank you for coming onto the show. Thank you for sharing all of your wisdom and all of these just like real good information and just like practical tools that people can use and go out there and, you know, make their lives better and, and sharing your journey and, and being vulnerable and stuff. I absolutely love that, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me on, Corey. I appreciate it. All good. And for anyone who's listening, if you just click down any of the links below, it'll have all the links to all of Sean's stuff and you'll be able to find him anywhere. <laughs>